everyone, I am Vets Golden. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am going to show you how to make a quick birthday card with just literally a stencil and ink. This is really great if all you have on hand is white cardstock. And honestly, white cardstock and black cardstock, probably the only cardstock you need if you have a good ink selection, ink pad selection. So anyway, I took white texture cardstock. It was an eight and a half by 11, cut it down the middle, scored it, boom, now we have a card base. We're gonna go ahead and just get this ready. So I'm going to take some overzealous dye ink on this, and we're just gonna ink up the edges on this where we're gonna put our card front. And our card front that we're going to use is uh, a four by five, and a four by five and a quarter, and it is just Nina flat white cardstock. Really, really great stuff. So I'm just getting the edges because that's all that's going to peek through. But like I said, when you just got white cardstock and ink, this is what you do. You just make your own. All right. Looking good, looking good. All right. And again, that was the overzealous. I'm gonna set this aside. Now we're gonna go ahead and ink that first card base. And I'm just gonna pick up, gonna get this green off here. Now I am gonna keep in mind my color families as I do this, because literally we are creating a card from the bottom up, meaning we're laying down a surface color first, so we need to make sure that whatever we put on top of that surface color blends nicely into the background. So I'm just going to start and add some of this ink in. And this is um, rosy, I think this is, this is piggyback. And I also have some, some rosy cheeks on here too. It looks like actually, I don't like that. That's not the right color, so I'm gonna take this. I used the wrong blending tool. Shame on me, but that's okay. I'm gonna leave this in the video so you can see what happens when you make a mistake like that. Instead of taking your card base and just getting mad and throwing it away, just turn it over and then get yourself the right blending tool. It's as easy as that. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> that's a little bit lighter. I'm like, oh, that's a wee bit dark. All right, so I'm just gonna blend this out. And I'm gonna go around the edges with um, rosy cheeks just to kind of darken it up a little bit. But um, you know, you don't have to. So I'm gonna leave the center, um, you know, uh, this rosy, this piggyback pink color. Okay, so there we go. I really, really like that. All right, so I'm gonna take my rosy cheeks now, I can use a splitting brush on this because this is a lighter color, this is darker, so this will be okay. And I'm just going to blend right on in to the edges, this beautiful rosy cheeks. And this is just going to allow some definition to happen, and that's really all I'm trying to do. Just a little bit of shading. And then once I get it all blended in to the edges, like so, just gonna keep working it through. I'm gonna go ahead and just start to blend it out into the center so that I don't have any, you know, horribly harsh lines. And now we have a beautiful background done. And we just used ink. Okay, so from here I'm going to take my stencil. I'm gonna use this stencil. This is by Simon Hurley. It is called Cake Maker. So I just want to Pop it on here and I'm going to use my triple berry as the, the base. So it's a really pretty purple. Purple you have to be careful with. I don't wanna mix this on top of a green or anything like that. This will be fine on a pink because it's a nice, um, it's a nice uh, uh, red base. So this will work really nicely. All right, so I'm just lining, lining it up to my liking. I'm using just a little blending tool right here. I'm just popping 
this color on in and it sounds like my daughter just got home from her hike with her friends so if you hear anything in the background it is a Saturday here <laughs> and uh, you know we live here okay so I'm just blending this on through and I really think that I can probably take my blending tool and uh, blend that out even even some more I, I don't think I necessarily need that detail uh, blending blender all right so and if it if you're worried about those lines being harsh just keep going over it uh, the ink will eventually blend out Simon Hurley ink especially is really blendable I absolutely love it okay so I'm done with this color and I'm gonna go ahead and use prom queen to uh, build my cakes so this is going to be a lot of fun. So here we go. I'm going to take my cake and I'm just going to layer it up. I'm going to do the two cakes on this, not the one. If you want to do that, that is an option for you. And I'm just going to take some prom queen like so. This is a beautiful, pretty pink. And um, just blend it over those spots like so. Like so. All right and voila look what we have we have a pretty double layer cake right there and i'm going to just take and wipe off my stencil because you know i am going to be building on this and i don't want any of that color to cross into you know another color or anything like that and then from here um, i want to go ahead and i think i'm going to add these fun stripes I really am digging on the stripes they're so cool so just gonna layer that up like so now for this definitely want this detail brush th this detail um, pin for it and I'm going to go in with some purple on this one so I'm gonna go in and just and this is called crown me this is this pretty purple and just hit this, hit these pretty spots right here. And you know, I'm really loving that drippy up there, so I made add that on top of this, which would be a lot of fun as well. And, uh, but before I put the drippy on, I think I probably want to go ahead and put my candles on, because the drip, I'm going to do that in purple as well. And I think for my candles, I'm going to do the triple berry um, along with the rosy cheeks. So my um, crown me is going to be darker. So I'm thinking I probably need to put that down first. All right. So let's see what we have here. Maybe I'll change my mind. I don't know. So cute. No, definitely do want want to do the drips. Think that'll be really fun. So yeah, I'm gonna do purple, and um, I'll add the candles after I'm done. I think. So I'm just gonna take and line that up on the bottom like so, and then for this. I'm just going to take this blending tool with some purple on it and I'm making sure that my top is lined up perfectly I think that that's the most important piece and then I'm just going to take it on through and blend it and so I'm gonna continue to kind of go over this a little bit a couple times I'm not gonna uh, you're still gonna probably be able to see the um, stripes through the bottom but that's okay so I'm just blending this on through really making sure I'm getting some nice coverage and look I, I went up over there so my bad, I should have masked that off. All right, ooh, I love that. Isn't that such a pretty cake? Okay, so for this, I'm, I'm gonna do something to hopefully kind of uh, 
deal with that. But we'll leave it for now. And when I when I start to get the candles on, I might not even be able to tell that it's there, you know. But sometimes that happens, and instead of throwing away the whole project, you know, it might just work. So I'm just going to do one candle, and I'll do it right there. And the candle that I'm going to create for this, I'm going to do that prom queen again, and then I'm going to do the stripes in triple berry, and I'm going to do the little flame and over the moon. So let me go ahead and get my flame done, and let's see, this should work okay on top of this pink. It, it shouldn't make an ugly color because uh, they're both in that warm color family. All right, so I'm just using my detail on this and then for this one I'm going to go in with some prom queen like so and I'm just using the, the detail blender tool I really love this detail blender tool it's fabulous and I'm just gonna keep going over it until I get it to my liking I think we're there all right And then I'm gonna make sure that I just wipe that off like so and then I'm going to go ahead and add this stripe on over the piece and I'm gonna do this one in triple berry so I'm gonna just pick up some of this on my blending tool and just really working on it there we go all right really cute now I know that little that little dab right there so what you're gonna do now this is a, a water reactive um, ink so I'm gonna just try to take and take a spray bottle and spray the end of my my tool and just Gonna dab it out a little bit. And it totally is masking it slightly. So it's not so bright. But what I need to do now is I need to take everything and just hit it with some water. Alright, and now that'll set up there and react. And once I'm once I'm done with it wanting to react, I'm just gonna take and dry it. So that, that actually created a really, I think, a really cool effect on this card. So I'm going to dry this, and then we will stamp an image on it. This is dry, so let's go ahead and add our sentiment. And I'm going to be using two of the sentiments from this um, stamp set. It's called Cakewalk, and I have them already on my acrylic block. And if you want to not lose your stamps on your desk or, you know, you want to be able to if you don't have a lot of acrylic blocks and you're like, I don't want to have to clean between, I like to put one uh, stamp on each side of the block and that way I can do two at a time and it sets up and I just keep it there until I'm done. Now I did lay down a foam mat and that will allow for a cushioning so I'll get a really nice image when this is stamped. So I'm going to be stamping in the crown me and I'm going to use the happy birthday and then the you want a piece of me. So I'm going to do the happy birthday on the bottom. I didn't get all the way stamped there. <laughs> Sometimes I got to, I've not used this stamp yet, so. Looks like that's pretty good. So I'm just going to do this on the bottom. And then I'll do you want a piece of me on the top. And this one I gotta switch it so I can see. Make sure I line it up. So, okay, 
and then let's go ahead and adhere this to the card base and then I'm going to throw on some Nuvo glitter drops just to give it a little something something on it. But it's a pretty cute little simple card that you can just create with ink and stencils in no time. So when I do my card, I always like to open it up and that way I will make sure that I get perfect placement. And doesn't that look so pretty against the, the green? I love it. So I'm going to use some glitter glue on this um, just because it's, I just love glitter glue. <laughs> It can be used on so many things, and it even holds down lightweight embellishments. It's very nice stuff. All right. And I can move it around if I don't get it perfectly centered a little bit, but it does dry relatively quickly. So that green back makes a really nice backdrop. And then I'm just going to take some of these glitter drops and I like to work in either three five or seven so for this I think I'll just do three so I'm gonna do two up here and again I'm using um, the glitter ones and I'm doing kind of a blue just to pop in a little bit more color now if you notice there's a peak on that and it looks kind of wonky so there's a couple ways that we can make that drop more even and better. You can actually take your card and just tap it like this and it'll fall usually. And if that doesn't work, although that is working, you can just take a pin and just swirl out the top and then that will work as well to get it to pop down. Now I did get little peaks so what you would do at that point is now you would tap it out that just makes it more even and now we just tap it out you know you can just take and really make it go peak if you want and as it dries, it will start to fall a little bit as well. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave it down below. And I also have all of these products listed for you at the Ranger site, actually, and that's listed down below as well. So all you have to do is just extend the description box. There's a little arrow down there, and you'll see that affiliated link pop up. It is an affiliated link, so what that means is I do make a small commission off of whatever is sold through it, and that just helps me continue to bring content to you since the tutorials on my channel I like to keep free. Um, and so basically I get paid through YouTube ad revenues and also through anything you guys buy in affiliated links. And this particular project, I do have an affiliated link for, sometimes I don't. So I would appreciate it if you got this idea from me that you would use that. Otherwise, always make sure that you support your content developers because, you know, the money has to go somewhere. And if you have somebody that you love watching and learning from, might as well go to them, right? So they can keep continuing to bring you guys really great tutorials for free. All right, until next time, I'm Bets Golden. Happy crafting.